Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug, and we're carrying on with the Compendium series, and today we're taking a look at the Ogren. So, let's jump in. So, I've got four builds for the Ogren, two melee and two ranged, and I will be going over the build I used to complete hard mode, killing the Kornak twins on Damnation++, but we should get to that towards the end. Okay, so the first one is a Gunlugger build. And this is what I generally use for it. I'm using the Brunt's Pride Mark II Bully Club with Unyielding, Maniac, Thunderous, and Skullcracker. Thunderous and Skullcracker are an amazing combination of abilities. It's just laying down huge amounts of extra damage on anything you hit and combining that with all of your talents as well. It really does make the Ogryn a melee powerhouse and even with the gunlugger builds uh you've got to keep in mind you are a hybrid class so you won't just be using your range weapon continuously you will have to switch to melee to mop stuff up and deal with hard targets so that's what you're using for the melee and for the range we're using the gorgon mark 4 twin linked heavy stubber we have reload speed damage to flak armor overwhelming firepower and death spitter I've been finding uh, Charmed Reload is being eked out quite a lot by other blessings, which is why we're using Overwhelming Firepower and Death Spitter instead of Charmed Reload. So yes, you will have to reload slightly more, but you will be doing a lot more damage. And for the Curios, we're using Max Health with Max Health and Toughness with Combat Ability Regeneration. Same again, Max Health with Max Health, Toughness, and Combat Ability Regeneration. And a final one of Toughness with Toughness, Max Health, and Combat Ability Regeneration. These are pure stat sticks to give us more defensibility and offense with the Combat Ability Regeneration. This is generally what we're using through all of the builds. These just work very nicely with the Ogryn. And because the Ogryn gets the extra wounds, we really don't need to take a wound uh, Kuro at all. So let's take a look at the talents. So this is the Gun Lugger build 1, and this is what we're using. Furious into Smash'em, into Heavyweight, into Lynchpin, taking bombs away only because we want Slam and Soft them up. If you go for Big Friendly Rock or Frag Bomb, you can only get one of these, which is annoying, but these are very, very good. And then we're going into Point Blank Barrage, which is our F ability. And then we're picking up Bullet Bravado and Light Them Up. Uh, after a lot of testing, Light Them Up does seem to do a lot more damage than Hail of Fire. And then into Ammo Stash, down into Coward Culling. And then we're going to be grabbing Towering Presence, Big Boom, Unstoppable Momentum, Melee Damage over here. And then we're going down the middle here for Get Stuck In, Bruiser, Won't Give In, and the final point in Feel No Pain. Feel No Pain is an amazing keystone that gives us a hell of a lot of survivability. And, you know, you're a gun lugger, so you lug the gun. And as you can see, the Gorgonum is just an absolute beast. If you really want to, you can use the Achilles. Though the Achilles does suffer from a lot less armor penetration than the Gorgonum. But you do have more ammo and a higher rate of fire. As you can see. But it's not a bad weapon. If you prefer the Achilles, use the Achilles. It is no means a trash weapon. It's very, very good you will just suffer a little bit against heavier targets. As you can see. But, press F. That stacking fire debuff really does help you to take it down. Though you will be basically dumping a mag into a crusher to bring it down with the Achilles. Lighter armor targets, not so much of a problem. And I'll just show you the comparison with that against the Crusher. It's still not amazingly good, 
it feels like you're flicking peas at it, to be honest. But even without the F ability, you can bring it down if you really want to. Though I would highly suggest just whipping out your melee weapon and giving it a bonk. Just charge up those heavy attacks and you can pretty much deal with them, no problem. And this is with just the blessings on the weapon. We haven't gone too far into any of the melee talents. But as you can see, the Brunt's Bashers do deal with armor pretty amazingly. Right, let's jump into one of the more... Sorry. Cat decided to launch yourself into my desk. Um, into the actual melee builds. So, this is the first one. We are using the Brunt's Basher Mark 3B Bully Club with Unyielding, Carapace, Skullcrusher, and Thunderous. And with this build, you can either use the Rumbler, as you can see here. With I've left it just with range crit, damage, and reload just because uh, I wanted the blessings to be exactly what I wanted them to be. So Adhesive Charge, which is actually a lot better than people give it credit for. You'll be sticking this thing to Ogrins and Monstrosities, which basically turns it into a crack grenade launcher. Which is why I wasn't worried too much about the perks. But if you want to, you can also use the kickback. And I have a few versions of this that I've been testing out. As you can see here, with full ball, terrifying barrage, or expansive and surgical. But weirdly, I've actually settled on this one. Blaze the way and surgical tends to be the king when it comes to this. But you can always go for expansive and surgical if you want to. It does uh, expansive does kind of tie in a little bit better with your melee talents, but it really depends what you like to play with. So you could change expansive to full bore or whatever you want. They all work pretty damn well. And the great thing about the kickback is it doesn't seem to have a range drop-off. So let's just come over here. So you got your mauler, and we're using a shotgun. And even from this distance, which is 51 meters, let's see if we can pull it right back. So 64. And even then, it's knocking it on its bum. Which is why I love the kickback. It does ridiculous amounts of damage, and it doesn't seem to have any range drop-off. And, for example, if something is very close to you, you just shred the hell out of it. So if you're locked down in a corridor, and everything's coming to barreling towards you, you don't even have to aim it. You just keep firing until everything stops moving. And this thing is just an absolute little terror. And I will quickly show you off the other Brunt's Basher. They're all pretty similar. It's just about the attack patterns, really. I quite like this one because it's got the wide sweeps for the heavy attacks, and it deals with crushes pretty nicely. And of course we've got the big friendly rock. which is hilarious to throw it. Everything and anything. And uh, they regenerate, so that's nice. Right, let's have a look at the talents. So as this is a melee hybrid build, all focused on heavy attacking, we are going with Lynchpin, Heavyweight, Furious, Smash'em, the best defense, the big friendly rock, down into Slam, and we're picking up Indomitable, Stomping Boots, and Pulverize, because we want those bleed stacks. Batter, for more bleed stacks on every heavy attack. You will mostly be heavy attacking everything. Into Bonebreaker's Aura for more heavy attack damage. Coming across here to grab these nodes. Attention Seeker, just to help out the team. Get Stuck In, Bruiser. Delight and Destruction, 
Dominate for lovely, lovely rending into Implacable. And then we're going to be taking Heavy hit Hitter, just getting started, and Brutish Momentum so that Light Attacks can refresh the duration, as there will be times when you need to Light Attack. But if you want to, you can dump out Attention Seeker if you don't want the Taunt, and you can put it in Too Stubborn to Die, uh, Towering Presence, uh, Unstoppable Momentum. They're all good picks, really. I tend to take it just to help out in Pugs. Uh, I, I would suggest not taking Crunch as the amount of time it actually takes to proc is ridiculous. You'll be holding that heavy attack till the very end and you will get poked and prodded while you're doing it. It's just not a great talent. I mean, if we could, I would take health boost into hard knocks, but we don't really have the points there because we really do want to have bruiser. I mean, we could take off that and put it into health boost and hard knocks. But you do reduce your coherency radius, which is quite important because you want those procs from people killing stuff. But it's kind of how you want to build it. There is This is the nice thing about this build. You can fiddle with it however you want without breaking it. There are lots of different ways you can add little bits in here and there. And it, it just makes it slightly better in different ways. Now, I'll just have a quick look at the loadout again. Damn, Curio keeps sneaking into all of my builds. There we go. So yeah, it's health with the, the stat sticks again. More health with more stat sticks. And why is there a wound on here? It's ever so sorry, folks. There's just I seem to have fiddled this and not put it back how it's supposed to be. So yeah, it's basically stat stick across everything with max health and one toughness. And then we have the slightly different build. So this one gets rid of the big friendly rock. We're taking bombs away, which isn't great because you either want the big friendly rock or you want the frag bomb. Bombs away isn't great, but it does get us slam and soften them up, which overall leads to quite a big increase if you're playing very aggressively to damage. And then it's pretty much the same along here, coming down here into hard knocks, grabbing stuck in and bruiser, and all the way down to the bottom, but we are missing out on brutish momentum, so your light attacks will not refresh the duration anymore. Not a massive problem, you just have to be a little bit more careful with uh, your heavy attacks and weave them in a little bit more. But that is generally how this build works it's just lots and lots of charging around getting those bleeds on things and do remember you can cancel that charge at any time when you want to stop so like just then I cancelled it just as I've gotten through them generally I do this just by pressing uh, back and dodge just to cancel it but yeah, with every bleeding target, you will take less and less damage. And you will just generally be charging between groups, putting the bleeds down, laying down the heavy attacks. And as soon as anything is outside of your range, you pull out your kickback and you deal with it very swiftly. I generally use it for picking off gunners because gunners are your biggest threat in this. So if you don't have a charge to get to them, just lay down fire on them. You are a, a hybrid build. Don't be afraid to pull out your gun and start shooting. Your stacks of heavy hitter and all of your melee things will be put back on as soon as you get back into melee range. It doesn't take long for the setup to start again. Which is kind of why I love this build. It's just very, very efficient and very effective. All right, and last but not least... And what I promised everyone, I will show off the build I used to kill the Karnak Twins. Now, I'm more of a melee Ogryn player. I just prefer it. But 
the Gunlugger build was king in this fight. The amount of burst damage you need in the hard mode, and not just burst, but also consistent, and it's very difficult to balance those two things. Um, I found this was the the key. It made it an incredibly smooth run. So, let's get into it. So I used the Mark 1, the original Bully Club, for dealing with anything in armor from uh, Rages, Maulers, and Crushers. This thing basically just one or two shots them with a heavy attack to the face. And then we used the Gorgonum Mark IV Twin Linked Heavy Stubber for, with Reload, Flak Armor, Overwhelming Firepower, and Death Spitter. I did find the Gorgonum was better than the Achilles on this because it just absolutely shredded the shields. And even more importantly, when the shields broke, it laid down their armor penetration and fire debuff on them really well. The Achilles lacking that armor penetration wasn't as effective against the bosses after the shields are broken. It is more effective at breaking the shields because that damage is just based off rate of fire. But once the shields are broken, they get their base armor back and all of that sort of thing. So the Gorgon wins out there. And I used these Kuros, Max Health, Toughness, Max Health, just with Health, Toughness, and Combat Ability Regeneration on all of them. And for the Talents, this is a bit of a weird build, but this build was specifically made for dealing with the Karnak Twins. So we took Smash'em, Heavyweight, Lynchpin, and Frag Bomb. Frag Bomb is basically your oh crap button in the fight. Uh, you can clear an entire wave of this if things are getting hairy. You just group up, drop the frag bomb, and everything is gone. So this is your one get out of jail free card in that fight. And then we're taking soft them up. Enemies damaged by you take 15% more damage. This works for both melee and range, which is very, very good. You just keep tagging both bosses so that everyone gets more damage on it. Point blank barrage into bullet bravado and light him up. Ammo stash, coward culling, and that's where we stop here. And unstoppable momentum, 20% movement speed on for two seconds on ranged kill. In the Karnak fight, movement speed is imperative. You have to be able to keep moving and you have to have enough speed to be able to run over the bombs to trigger them but not get hit by them. It's better being done by a zealot or a melee ogrin with the charge but this also works and then we're jumping over here for two stop them to die delight and destruction and dominate we don't really need delight and destruction but what we do need is dominate so this is a wasted point here sadly but you need the rending and then we're coming down here into get stuck in on activating your combat ability you and your allies and uh, incoherency gain 20% movement speed you're also immune to stun suppression again movement speed is king in this fight into bruiser into won't give in the health boost and the first node in feel no pain and I know this is a bit of a weird build but this is what got me through it I spent so many nights trying it with this the melee build and it works amazingly it really does this build is absolutely great if you've got two other people in your group with the burst damage to kill the bosses if you don't you will survive to the end you will be the last ogre in standing but you won't have the damage to push through but with this build you are the damage you are the one who knocks and yeah it, it it was an amazing fight and this is a very fun build to use I, would, I wouldn't suggest it too much on Damnation and Uruk runs I would probably go for the original one that I showed but this build is specifically built for that fight so give it a try and uh, I hope you have as much success with it as I did but yeah there you go folks that is the Ogryn 
I do love it. He's becoming. I didn't like it to start with, but he's becoming one of my favourite classes to play. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy him as much as I do. And uh, talking about that, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit that little bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, consider membership. We have a members-only Discord. We have lots of fun emojis, and we have prize giveaways every month. So if you fancy it, take a look. Until next time, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you later.